Hi folks and welcome to another SLR Photography UK tutorial. Today I'm going to do one on the supermoon or a fake supermoon in Photoshop. So let's let's begin. Okay, what you're going to need to do first of all is get some raw images, so photos basically. So first thing we do is go to Firefox or your favourite web browser and we go to Google Images and we're going to go into Advanced Search so first of all let's type in Moon we want to get a, a moon that's large enough in size but also we can cut it out so I think let's search tools size larger than let's go for 1024 by 768 ok I think this moon here click on view image and if you look at my cursor now it's a plus which means you can make it bigger I mean look at that that's that's pretty big so now what I can do is I can go to file save as and let's save that on the desktop if you look on the left desktop is highlighted so photograph the moon dot jpeg at the top you can see where you are as well so do a save okay um, we can close that one now go back now we want to find, let's say, a forest silhouette. Let's see, let's go for this one here. So we can go to there, yet again, view image. So it's got a plus, which we know is going to be pretty big. Um, so we can right click, save image as, and let's just call it forest. It's got some weird name. I think that's a, that's a Pinterest name that they've given it because that's where the photo seems to have come from. So make sure it's on your desktop. Do a save. Okay. Let's see. Is that it? Yep. I think we finished with that now. So now we open up Photoshop. So open up Photoshop. Go to file. Want to open. Um, let's see. Let's do the forest background first. That's forest.jpg. Okay, now that layer's locked, if you see. Padlock means locked, means you can't do anything with it. But we'll unlock that, don't worry at the moment. Um, okay, and file, open, let's open the moon. Okay. Now, first thing we want to do is we want to get the moon away from the background. So what I'm going to do is we'll use our little, actually we'll unlock it. The way to unlock it is double click on the picture. This will pop up and just do OK. See, now the padlock disappears. So what we need to do is let's just zoom in one one, so one layer. Um, go to your tools palette, which you know on, is on the left now. Um, click on the magic wand, the shortcut will be W. So let's click on that. And if you can see the marching ants, um, they are going around all of the black. What we want is we want just the moon. So I'll do select inverse. So now the marching ants are going just around the moon. So I'll do an edit, I'll cut that. See, so the moon is cut now. We don't need this layer anymore. Um, we can close that. Let's close that layer. Actually, let's get rid of that. Yeah, let's get rid of that. We don't want to save that. So now we've got the forest, which is locked. Okay, Control V. Actually, let's name this. Um, let's call it forest. Now, don't forget the moon is not on the desktop. It is what you call in memory. So we're transferring a photo of the moon. So if we press Control V, it's not in cut or it's not in paste. It's in the middle in the cut and paste world I guess so control V right now we've got a massive moon which is on our work pad so let's just call it moon again it's just to just help us in the future right so we've got moon we've got forest now what we need to do is switch off moon and we need to split forest into two so 
because it's unlocked you can see there's no padlock there go to our little magic wand tool and just click I guess on the forest we want all of the forests and the sky separated so by doing that you either click on forest or sky I chose sky so now we've got all of the sky selected so I can do an edit I can do a cut okay remember what I said about it's between cut and paste world so now we can do a control V there we go now see it's separated the layers so we've got moon let's call this sky okay right so now let's get the sky lined up by highlighting the sky layer you can either use your keypad on your keyboard um, so that's probably a lot finer if you do that so there we go so it doesn't look like anything has happened but we've got it separated now I'd suggest let's save this layer um, let's call it supermoon supermoon on the desktop see the reason I'm saying save it is because I've worked on stuff before and I've had power cuts and it's like you know you've got a lot of work that's just you've lost it right okay so moon sky nothing okay this is what we need to think so I think we need the resize it. So control T, T4, Tango. Oops, no. The moon we want to resize, sorry. So make sure the moon is highlighted. Control T. That's it. Okay. That box shows the real size of the moon behind the forest. So if you make sure you got your shift key down, otherwise you get this. Look, see? You don't want that. So press the shift it just automatically it resizes it proportionally okay so the moon is hidden now do an apply don't worry if it's not as long as that doesn't look like you you're actually doing anything but make sure moon is highlighted make sure you've got move tool now just very gently just move the moon up okay moon looks abnormally too large for the sky but again control T and let's just Let's just do that, make it a little bit yeah, something like that. Okay. Again, apply. Okay. Just do a save, or you can do a control S. So press down the control and the letter S and that will save it. Now what I think we should do is give it a bit of realism. I think let's give it a bit of blur and then let's give it a bit of glow. Okay. As you know from before, there's a thing called Gaussian Blur that's under a filter. So go to Filter, go to Blur, go to Gaussian Blur, and that's too much. Uh, let's just give it a weensy, just a fraction. So just play around with it again. Because when you look at the moon, it isn't sharp, sharp, is it? It's just like the glowy effect. That's probably a little bit too much. Let's say one. That's fine. Okay, now what we want to do is go into the moon layer. Make sure it's highlighted. Right click. This is where some of the magic happens, where Photoshop's got lots of stuff behind the main menu. So go to blending options. And what we want to do, we want to create an outer glow. So if you look here, we've got drop shadow let's just go through some of them actually you know what let's just show you guys what it see that on the left let's just over exaggerate it so drop shadow um, first of all let's go to normal um, let's do see that's a drop shadow so you switch it off um, inner shadow that's quite realistic double click on the actual inner shadow go to normal and again let's see that isn't realistic but 
there's fade, you can fade it, you can see and you can make it different colours as well, it doesn't have to be black in this case, let's switch off the shadow right let's go to outer glow the default is yellow so if we double click on it get rid of screen, go to normal now double click on the the little yellow paint palette box now we want to sample the sky okay so just get your little cursor and whiz it over to the sky you see that's what we're, we're sampling that color of the sky if we want to sample black if we want to sample grey, see? That's a little paint dropper tool. So let's just sample, I don't know, quite a glowy colour. And if you don't like that, you can just... Th this box here shows you, see, what your, what your colour is. So now we've got a bit of glow. Um, let's, again, exaggerate it. Let's go to spread, see? Sometimes it's good to exaggerate something and then sort of move it on back, see? So that's that's okay. I think too much, but it gives it. You, you get the you get the hint. You get the the idea. Okay, right. That's got a bit of glow behind it. Now what we want to do is we want the moon to look orange or yellow, because of course you know it's like a orangey yellow sky. So don't touch the other layers. This is what you do. Now highlight the moon layer, right click, go to select pixels, so now we've got our little friendly marching ants, and I think we open up another layer, okay, which is called layer 1. Now go to your eyedropper tool and let's, let's get a colour, let's get a sample, uh, let's say orange again. Now if you look in the left hand side here, it's sort of brown. If you're not happy with that, I mean, we can make it. I don't know, like that. Now, because we've got the marching ants selected, we can go to our paint bucket and drop the colour we've just picked into the new layer. See? Okay. That looks like, as I always say, it's damaged the picture, but actually it hasn't. So what we can do now is select the move tool, press ctrl D that'll unselect the marching ants around top layer and what we do is we go to the top where it says normal so make sure this is important, make sure this layer is selected and go to, let's see let's go to overlay ok, see what overlay does so now that's, that still looks a bit vivid, but that's okay. We can go to opacity. Remember, opacity will tone down a layer, sort of make it visible or invisible. See? See what I've done? See? Again, just play around with it. Okay. Let's think. That sh yeah, that should be right. Okay. Right, now this is what you need to do. Um, we want to join. If I switch off that layer, see? I can switch off that layer. And we're left with just that. So what we want to do now is pressing down shift, make sure your new layer is selected. And then make sure the moon is selected. Now we need to go to the top. So if I very slowly go to the top, go to layer, merge layers see so that is merged the moon and the other layer together and it's called it layer one so let's just call it moon okay and the moon is still you know you can still move the moon move the moon around you know see so we can get that effect we can do that so that is fully controllable with the beauty of layers so we can even do that now do a file save so that is saved now so what we can do is go to file there's two ways of saving one is just a standard save which will save it as a PSD file which is one of the formats you can save in Photoshop and the other is 
you want to save for web and device. So let me do that again. Sorry, did that a bit quick. So cancel that. You go to file at the top. Save for web and devices. Sometimes it's good to learn the shortcuts. Um, I mean, some of the shortcuts are so long. It's just easy to go to the menu that you want. So save as. Now there's different um, formats you can save in. In this case, it's JPEG. Now, if you look down here, JPEG is 1.86 meg in size, which in the old days when you had dial-up modems, that was a, you know that was that would have taken ages. Um, and you can also change the quality. So if you look at the bottom, uh, where are we? 1.86. I could change this to absolute rubbish, rubbish quality. So we're at 100% quality. I can go down to, I don't know, let's see what we've got here. Yeah, see, it's gone down to 82k. Um, now if you look, it probably doesn't show up very much there, but see the quality there? It's all sort of blotchy and horrible. Right, so if I go up to 100% again, see, we're back at 100% and we're back to nearly 2 meg in size. So it doesn't really matter. Um, if you want to use web um, photos, so if you're creating a website and you want a very very fast loading but still good quality website with good photos on it, then you you would you would adjust that, and you know that would be that be adequate. So I think let's see. No, right. Let's see if we can go through GIF. Normally is a format you'd use where you would have many colours similar, so let's say a picture of a flag for example I don't know, red, white and blue you know where there is no shades in between, it's either red, white or blue um, so that's the GIF and PNG, that would be a vector basically PNG allows you to increase and decrease the size of a photo without getting rid of any quality so ok, JPEG, do save so don't forget we're going to save that as a JPEG See, if you look at the bottom now, we've got supermoon.jpg. That wasn't there before. So do a save. And remember it's on the desktop. Do a save. And it saved it. Minimise that. See, we've got supermoon.jpg. So now I can open this. Remember what I said before? We can open up and open with... Somewhere. There we go. Open with. And... Let's open it with photos. Okay. See? And that was it. And there you have it. Supermoon 2016. Done in Photoshop. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Okay, bye bye.